I'm Tatiana Gary, and I'll be talking about the Yaku people from the Saka Republic. I will discuss their culture and show you the foods that they eat, the clothes that they wear, and uh, how they survive. Um, I will also discuss their history and um, how they are similar to the First Nations today. The Yaku people are the indigenous people of the Saka Republic. The name Yaku is derived from an Invenki word, Yakult, meaning outsiders or strangers, but the Yaku call themselves Saka. They speak Saka Taila, which is the Turkic language. It is a language that has been heavily influenced by others, so Turkic speakers would not understand it. The history of the Yaku people starts with their migration in the 13th century from Central Asia. The Mongols started to invade Europe and started taking over, so the Yaku people decided to migrate to northeastern Siberia. In 1601, the Yaku people were heavily taxed. In 1634, they started a rebellion. In 1651, the Russian Orthodox Church had put a lot of effort into trying to convert the Yaku people into Christians. Uh, in 1701, uh, the Yaku people actually moved because the Russian political pressure was really high and there was a depletion of resources. Once the Yaku people found their places to live, uh, the Russian Federation started to um, establish prison camps um, and they would exile Russian prisoners um, off to Siberia. Uh, these Russian prisoners uh, would be forced to do very hard labor um, and many of them died because of the harsh winters and um, the difficult labor that they had to do. In 1801, uh, the Yaku people began to farm and many actually started to convert to uh, Christianity and started to attend the Russian Orthodox Church. In 1925, all of the farming was collectivized under Stalin's rule, meaning that uh, private ownership was not allowed and all the farming that the Yaku people had established was no longer legal, that they had to give up their farms uh, to the government. They resisted and many of them were arrested and killed. And also, anything that was uh, from the Yaku culture was banned. In 1961, a main way of how they resisted giving up their culture was by resisting giving up their language. Now everything else was illegal for them to practice, but speaking their language uh, was legal. So that's how they kept to it. And now it is one of the few Siberian indigenous languages that are not declining. Over 40% of their republic lies in the Arctic and the weather they have to endure can range from 39 degrees Celsius in the summer to minus 50 in the winter. During the winter, they lived in houses called balagans, which were made of mud, dung, and birch logs. Summer houses were called durasas, which were made of birch bark. People had to work very hard during the summertime to prepare for winter. Their work consisted of preparing timber to heat up the houses and schools and growing food. The Yakuts followed the religions of animalism and shamanism. They believed that spirits live in houses, mountains, trees, forests, water, and animals. According to them, the strongest spirits lived in bears, owls, and ravens. In old times, bare feet were placed outside the bed of the little children for protection. A shaman is a person with access to the spirit world, and both men and women could become one. However, women were seen as more powerful shamans. Now, most of the Yakuts have converted to Russian Orthodox because of historical events. But shamanism is still not completely gone. Clothes were mainly made from reindeer and horses. They were sewed with dried intestine threads or yarn made of horse hides. Because of the cold, clothes had to be very thick, so one pair of boots could take as much as eight reindeer feet. Their diet consists of meat, fish, and milk. Traditional dishes are still eaten today, but mainly on special occasions. Kyorchek is a real treat because it's a popular breakfast dessert which is similar to ice cream. It is made from fresh cow's milk and whipped with berries. 
it's especially amazing to eat it because uh, during the winter time, fruits and vegetables can't grow. So all of the berries that they had picked um, were berries from the summer before. So it's not often that they can have this delicacy. Yakushia consists of thousands of lakes, so fish is a main food source for the Yakut. One of their delicacies is strogan stroganina, which are long slices of frozen fresh river fish, which is eaten frozen during the winter time. Um, it is usually served with vodka um, when everyone ha is having a feast. Squirrels are the most common food source for hunters. They provide food and fur, but it can be tricky to hunt them because the hunter has to hit the squirrel's eye, otherwise the skin gets ruined. Because it's almost always freezing, there are rarely any fruits or vegetables that grow, like I had mentioned before. Sometimes the yaku collect and buy everything during the summertime and keep them in the pantries to have for the winter. There's constantly permafrost, so there is no groundwater in Yakutia. So Yakuts must save ice chunks in permafrost cellars and use it for fresh water during the summertime. Uh, this way, for every single season, uh, the Yakuts must prepare and for the next season so that they can survive. So during the summertime, they must pick the berries, pick the vegetables, and keep them in pantries. Um, while during the winter time, uh, they want to take a bunch of snow and uh, make sure that they have enough drinking water for the summer. Yakuts are very proud of their kumis drink. Uh, it is slightly similar to kefir because it is made from fermented mare's milk. It's considered a sacred beverage and it's mainly drunk on summer feasts from a traditional vessel called a korin. The Yakuts celebrate a summer solstice, which is very special to them. It is a time when they worship the sun deity and it's a time when everything becomes alive again. During the festival, they dress up in national dresses and eat traditional food. They have ceremonies, mantras, game contests, and races. Horse races were the most important part of the festival. Uh, they play uh, three different instruments, which are called the komas, uh, the drums, and a kirimpa. The komas is a directly translated to a jaws harp, um, which makes a boing sound um, and the uh, kirimpa is a yakut violin. In this video, you can see a woman playing the komas and a man playing the kirimpa. Like the First Nations of Canada, they use the entirety of an animal that they kill. So if they kill a horse, they use the horse hair for winter hats, belts, and bags, the hides for clothes and insulation for, for doors, uh, the tails for a tool to deter mosquitoes or to make clothing, and the meat is obviously eaten. One of their traditional sports that they play is called um, wrestling with a stick. The indigenous peoples of Canada are very similar to the Yakut people of um, Siberia uh, as in the sense that uh, the indigenous peoples, um, they have a strong connection to the land and to the animals and uh, the Yakut people uh, used to uh, strongly believe in, to, in sh shamanism and that every single spirit, mountain, rock, grass had a spirit. Um, they uh, both used the entirety of an animal when they killed it uh, so that nothing would go to waste. Um, and the summer houses of the Yakut uh, look uh, pretty similar to the ones that the uh, um, indigenous peoples use, um, the teepees. Um, I chose uh, the Yakut people specifically because 
Um, I'm from Russia, and I thought that uh, it would be interesting to learn about um, the indigenous peoples from an area where um, I am from. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this educational video.